Hi, my name is David Nielsen. I'm cPanel's integration developer. cPanel is cool because it does stuff. What I'm here to talk about is our hook system, which allows you to make cPanel do things whenever it does stuff. This talk is highly technical. There will be much code shown. If you have questions about the code, you can contact us, integration at cPanel.net. If you haven't already visited our newly revised SDK website, you should go there at your next opportunity. Everything about standard hooks is documented there, as well as the API and plugin documentation. If you have questions after reading it, you can email integration at cpanel.net. We'll answer your questions and probably update the documentation as well. My view is that if you read the documentation and still have a question, then the documentation wasn't clear enough. Getting back to standard hooks. One of the things cPanel does is keep backups of user accounts. Any user who has access to the backups feature in Feature Manager can initiate a backup of their account from this interface in cPanel. That includes this user, whose account is quite large. The user might initiate a backup and not receive a notification email for a long time, so they might start another backup process. And your hard disks and system administrators would start getting very sad. You, the clever administrator, get an idea. You remember hearing that it's possible to make cPanel do stuff when it does stuff, like take a backup. And you wonder if maybe you can make cPanel not back up an account if it's over a certain size limit. It turns out this is possible, kind of, mostly, and it will be completely possible in the foreseeable future. So you, the clever administrator, go to sdk.cpanel.net and read the guide to standardized hooks. The first thing you need to know when you're going to add a hook is called the hookable event, which you could also think of as a hook point or a callback or something else. It's the same concept. You're registering a piece of code to be run whenever cPanel reaches a certain point in its execution. cPanel has a provision for logging all hookable events it passes during its execution, and you can use this to determine which hookable event you want to use. Add this line, debug hooks equals three, to var cPanel cPanel.config, restart cPanel, and then perform the action you want to hook. Please note, having debug hooks turned on generates a lot of output. You should not do this on a server with many users, and you should turn it back off, set it to zero, as soon as you've got the information you need. With hook debugging turned on, tail the cPanel error log while you perform the action you want to hook. In this case, go into the cPanel interface as a user and initiate a backup process. Look through the error log output until you see the API call you want to block. In almost all cases, there will be a pre and a post hook, one that runs before the API call, one that runs after. Only the pre-hook can prevent an, an API call from running. The context line tells you the category and event, which are the bits you'll need later. In case you're curious, this is the piece of template toolkit code in Paper Lantern that runs when a user clicks the button to make a full backup. The API module is FileMan, and the function is full backup. It's still using the deprecated API 1, which creates a problem for us later. We'll talk about that in a minute. Once you've gotten the information you need, remember to set debug hooks equal to zero and restart cPanel again. Now you can start coding. This is the first half of a Perl module I wrote to prevent backups if an account is too large. You can write hook scripts in another language, but I promise it is worth your time to do it as a module in Perl for at least three very important reasons we'll cover in a bit. The module is named backup size limit. The file is in var cPanel Perl 5 lib, which is, does not exist on a cPanel install by default. This directory is the last directory where cPanel's Perl will look for modules, so don't think you can do nasty things like override built-in modules by placing them here. I define my size limit as four gigabytes, which seems reasonable. Depending on the speed of your hard disks, your mileage may vary. Hook modules must have a describe method. Hook scripts don't have to have one, but they make administering hooks a lot easier. They are absolutely worth the effort it takes to write them. The category, event, and stage values come from the debug hook output we got earlier. The hook value is the fully qualified name of the subroutine you want called when this hook point is reached. You'll see that subroutine in a minute. If you intend to prevent an API call from running, blocking has to be set to one. This only makes sense for pre-stage hooks, and you should set it to zero unless you expect to need it. Except type is a module, because this is a module. If you run it as an external script, it will be script instead. Those are the only possible values. One other option is available and not shown here, which is the escalate value. Hook code around events that run with user privileges also run with user privileges. If you need for this code to run as root, you can specify so. Do that as little as possible for security reasons. This is how you register your hook module cPanel. 
user local cPanel bin manage hooks, add module, and the name of your module. Because of the describe subroutine, you don't have to add command line flags to specify the category, event, type, blocking, or escalation. And you won't have to type them again when you want to remove the hook. During the development process, you'll probably be doing this a lot, so this will save you a lot of frustration. In case you're curious, this is the entry that gets added to cPanel's hook database when you run the command from the last slide. This is var cPanel hooks.yaml. It's possible to edit by hand, but YAML can be kind of fragile, and if you break the file, cPanel's behavior becomes undefined. So please don't edit this file by hand unless you really have to. The Guide to Standardized Hooks has a list of all the hookable events in cPanel and WHM. It's not exhaustive because listing the hook points around API calls would take years to document, but it does cover all the hook points that aren't in the cPanel or WHost Manager categories, which might be useful to you. This is the enforce subroutine. This is what gets called right before cPanel tries to execute API 1's full backup call. Two data structures get passed into the subroutine called context and data, which I'll show you in detail momentarily. This is the other big advantage of writing a module instead of a script. These structures are handed to you, ready to go, batteries included. The alternative is to read standard input, which will give you one blob of JSON for context, a new line, and a second blob of JSON for data. Serializing and deserializing data in any language is challenging to get right. You can save a lot of time, complexity, and completely sidestep a wide variety of bugs by writing your hook as a module and receiving data this way. This is what those data structures look like. Context includes the category, event, stage, and other metadata. In this case, we have no use for that data since we already know all of it. But if you wanted, you could use this to write your own dispatch method. I wouldn't, but it's an option that's available to you. The data data structure includes everything that was passed into the API call. The only thing we care about here is the name of the user initiating the backup. In the enforce subroutine, I grab the username out of the provided data structure, then run quota and parse the output to find out if they're over my limit. I tried to find a cleaner way of doing this, but I couldn't. In order to prevent an API call from running, the hook module has to raise an exception, and the exception string has to contain the word bailout in all caps. This is how cPanel knows that you want to block execution. If the bailout string isn't present, cPanel assumes that the module raised an exception for some other reason. If you use a script instead of a module, it has to exit with a non-zero status and print bailout to standard error. That method is more fragile, which is another reason to prefer writing your hook as a Perl module. This only works in cPanel 11.46 and newer, but that's not a problem because you're all running up-to-date versions, right? Earlier I said this maybe kind of worked. Well, the script provided does prevent backups from running, but this is what the user sees when they're over the limit and try to run a backup. Yeah, it indicates success. This is part of how API 1 works. We assume success for almost everything. There is a backlog item to get this fixed for cPanel and WHM 11.54, and I tried to have it ready for demo today, uh, but unfortunately 11.54 is some months away and I couldn't get this working in time. The work to move away from API 1 is very labor intensive, so it's unfortunately going to take a long time. At this point, I'm ready to answer any questions. Um, if you have code questions or want more code examples or would like us to update the documentation to include your use case, email integration at cpanel.net and we'll answer your questions as best we can. Thanks for your time.